What is going on guys? Welcome to the channel and today I wanted to introduce you to the single responsibility principle and I'm gonna talk about what is single responsibility principle, why it's important and also how you can apply it in Python. So let's just quickly start by defining single responsibility principle. Single responsibility principle is one of the solid principles and solid are five the most well-known principles of object-oriented design. So S is single responsibility principle, O is open closed principle, L is substitution principle, I interface segregation principle and the last one D dependency inversion principle. So now you might write I don't care about design of an application and all of this nonsense. I just want to build applications that work and solve the problem. You should care about design of an application because you want to build applications that not only just work now, but are also easy to change in the future. Why it's important? It's important because um, applications always change. Customers didn't know what they wanted, you didn't understand the requirements properly, or the application was so successful that people want new features, and all of this is unavoidable. And if your application is easy to change, then it will be a pleasure to work on this application. It's going to be flexible, it's going to be adaptable, but if your application is not easy to change, then the opposite will be true. Uh, it's going to be difficult to work on these applications, the changes will be expensive and that's why it's important. And honestly, building an application that just works often is not that difficult. However, creating an easy to change application sometimes can be quite challenging. You need to have knowledge, skills and experience. Luckily, we don't need to figure out everything ourselves. We have a lot of different tools and principles that help us build these kinds of applications. And about one of these principles we are going to talk now, and it's single responsibility principle. So the idea behind single responsibility principle is that your classes and methods should do only one thing. And you should have only one reason to change your classes and methods. Okay, let's just take a look at a simple example. So we have uh, an order class that has a constructor and it also has three methods, charge, send email and generate coupon. Does this class follow single responsibility principle? First of all, when you are writing a class, you need to ask yourself whether it's going to be easy to reuse or not. So imagine that we have another class called invoice. And this class also has an email method. And in this method, we are basically going to send an invoice email. So when we start building this class, we, we know that the implementation of this send email method is going to be similar to the implementation of uh, our send email method in order class. It's going to be similar, but still not the same. So how can we start writing this class, this invoice class, knowing that the implementation that we that we already have a quite similar method. So what we can do is we can try to reuse order class inside of invoice class. But if we are reusing order class just for the sake of sending an email, you should agree that it's a bad design decision. Because let's say we have another case. Let's say the user wants to reset the password and we need to send an email to this user with the new password. Do we also need to use order class here? Mm, no, order class doesn't have to do anything with that. Another solution is we can try to copy and paste code from order class to invoice class. And it will work, but I don't think I need to explain why it's a bad design decision. 
Basically, it's a violation of dry principle. Don't repeat yourself. So the problem with order class is that it shouldn't be responsible for sending emails in the first place. We should have a separate class or just a function. <laughs> Python doesn't force you to use OP everywhere. So we can have a class or a separate function that has responsibility of uh, sending emails to users. So let's say we have this mailer class that has send email method. And this class has only one responsibility and it's responsible for sending emails to users. This class can be easily reused in other places. Let's take a look at another method of our order class and it is um, generate coupon. So again, what if we need to generate coupon somewhere else? Example, let's say we want to generate coupon on a birthday of a user. So basically we need to send an email to this user with the generated coupon. And the same story will be here as well. Order class shouldn't be responsible for generating coupons. We should have a separate class that is going to handle all of this stuff related to coupons. And it could look something like that. So we can have a coupon class with a constructor and a generate class method. And the purpose of this uh, generate class method is to basically create an instance of the class coupon with generated code. So yeah, that was an example of single responsibility principle. I tried to make it as simple as possible. Maybe in the future I'll try to look at some real projects that I worked on before and maybe I'll try to find some code that follows this principle and some code that doesn't. By the way, leave a comment below if you are interested in that. And if you are still watching this video, I appreciate it so much. And if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you are new to the channel, my name is Dennis. And this channel is all about mastering web development and growing as a full stack Python web developer. If that appeals to you, consider subscribing. And if you'd like to connect with me even further, you can follow me on Twitter or on my Instagram. Links will be in the description. So yeah, thanks for watching guys. See you in the next one.